Welcome to this episode of the Dan Lok Show. Today, I am super excited to have my friend Billy Jean joining what's up, us. What's up? What's up? Dan, I'm, I'm going to jump right in and interrupt you. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if, you, if you've ever seen any of my ads before, I, I love the art of storytelling. I love the art of getting attention. And there's very few people who I've seen online where I stop and I'm like, that motherfucker. <laughs> those guys, I see, I see your ads, and every time I see your ads, I'm like, what's Dan got to say? The delivery, it's humorous, but it's honest. It's, it's that blunt type of, like, message that people need to hear. So mm. from one person who loves to get attention online to someone who's really great at generating it and doing the damn thing, dude, it's an honor and a pleasure to be here. So thank you for having me. Hey, Billy, I appreciate it. And when I see your work, like the, the video ads that you put together, I always have my, my team, I tell my team, look, look at Billy's stuff. Let's look at, what, what, what is he up to? Oh, he's a new YouTube ad. Now, for my audience, maybe you've seen Billy's ad, like on Facebook or on, on YouTube, and you see it's always very, very creative. And I think Billy and I, we kind of share the same kind of yeah. idea philosophy that that being boring in marketing is a sin right it's like you don't want to be boring you don't want to be always doing the same thing well in addition to that i think it actually puts you out of business now like yes. I, I genuinely believe that the companies that don't make uh humor entertaining getting attention taking a stand uh like a mandatory and like a core competency of what they do I'm mm -hmm. telling you right here, they will go out of business. It's just like the Dollar Shave Club when they disrupted the shaving industry and then got bought yes. for $1 billion. It was yes. because it made people laugh. And, and it was really like, built on that one kind of one major video, right? That's it. They one major video and that was the catalyst to the rest. And, you know, we, we know how that ended. Yeah. Well, you know, Billy, let's, let's jump in right into it yeah. <laughs> since you, you, you like interrupted my, my pattern, my, my yeah. flow. Now, you, you know this, this episode is going to be different. Maybe that's the opening, right? Yeah. Um, now, before we get into it, I always want to know like your background, your story. How did you get into like the whole video marketing and, and now running a very successful agency, but also training other people how to do video ads, right? So talk sure. to us a little bit about that. Yeah. I, I think, honestly, the, the video component started, and this is just full transparency, mm. out of laziness. And what I mean there is like when I was in college and high school and the teachers would want us to do these PowerPoint presentations, dude, I got a 2.8. I got a, I got a, I was a barely getting by type of student. So the mm. idea of doing a PowerPoint presentation, like, no, that sounds horrible. So mm. I used to pull the teachers to the side and say, hey, can I do video instead? And then they would say, oh, wow, Mr. Shaw, going the extra mile. And I'm like, nope, the opposite, but whatever. <laughs> and I would, I would do these videos for class. And every time I did a video, the yes. class would be like, oh, shit, here comes Billy's videos, because they knew I would add humor. And it became like a thing. And then I realized something. Wow, look how much attention. And I get really good grades on these projects when I was really just being different. But that's what hooked me on, on video. But in regards to the agency stuff, Long story short, I was working at a company. Mm. I was making 600 cold calls a day, and it was mm. an online university. So my job was to call strangers and say, hey, do you want to go back to college and, and get your degree? So, so, you, so you were doing closing? I was. So yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. I'm a, I'm a salesman. I've done college sales and everything. So I was yeah. doing high-ticket closing on, yes. college, on college education online. That's so much fun. Okay. I, I hated it. Um, mm. But I learned so much being a part of that company. They right. had structure, they had process, they were going like crazy, but they also were way ahead of the internet trend of learning online. So mm -hmm. I said, dude, I got to get a part of this internet thing because I can see it's going to be a game changer. So mm -hmm. longer story short, uh, I had a buddy who had programs to help people quit smoking online. His family did. So I said, hey, can I license these programs and then sell them online? And they're like, cool. So my first thing I ever sold online was a quit smoking program. I never smoked mm. anything a day in my life. And so that was cool. And, mm. But to sell it was the hardest thing ever. Then I tried mm. call centers. I tried everything that you can imagine. And then finally, I stumbled across this thing called Facebook ads. And this was like 2011, 2012, whatever. And okay. I realized like, holy shit, this is how you scale. Because if I can make this work online, even when I'm sleeping, I can make money. Boom, I got obsessed started an agency, you know, six, seven years running an agency, and then went to the, the teaching side only after doing it on the agency side and demonstrating excellence, and then went to the education side, and here we are today. 
I love it. And I know one of the things that you and I, we, one of the things that we strongly believe, I teach the concept of high income skill, right? I mm -hmm. always believe that with uh, AI, with everything that's happening with technology, right? And that's why I train closers. What cannot be replaced is companies and entrepreneurs, they're always willing to pay people with yeah. skills that could generate more revenue or that could bring in customers. That would never go out of style, right? 100%. And I think that's something that you believe in as well, right? Well, like you said, it's, it's kind of the, the one-two punch. So you're training people on how to sell, which, like you said, it's never going anywhere. And what mm -hmm. also isn't going anywhere is people's need for leads. And so mm -hmm. for me, I always say, like, guys, if you want to make money, just solve a problem that others can't solve. Yes. So if people don't know how to generate leads themselves, and you mm -hmm. can be the girl, you can be the guy to help them do that, you're going to mm -hmm. make money. When people yes. are getting leads and they're not closing and you can be the guy in following dance processes and learning how to close, you will Correct. always be valuable. So in my Correct. company, I tell our team all the time, there's never a cap on how much money you can make. Just right. the skills that you have and the, mm. the, the, the revenue generated as a result of those. Mm. And I know I have quite a few of my closers, my students have gone to your, your office and they've actually taken some course, training. Yeah. Yeah, and then you met some of them as well. So, and they, they came back and they kind of shared with me with like your teaching and your ex the, the experience and they all rave about it. So like, good job, like yeah. phenomenal. Thank you, brother. I appreciate that. Yeah, so, so yeah, totally. So uh, we agree with that. And so with companies, take an example, because uh, I want to think about like my audience who's entrepreneurs, right? They're yeah. watching this and say, hey, um, Billy, hey, Dan, that's cool. I know that. Uh, we need, I need to do video, video works, but you know, what, what about like, I, I'm not funny or I, I'm not creative. I'm not yeah. entertaining. How do I create video ads that sell? So imagine this, I'm going to, I'm going to kind of, kind of preframe this. Imagine like I'm one of your private clients. I'm writing you a big check, right? Yeah, big yeah. check. And I say, Hey Billy, help me out. What, what was the formula here? What do I need yeah. to do? So first things first, and I'll give you, I'll give you literally an exact play by play formula. So if you're watching this, grab a pen and paper because I'm going to give you a step-by-step. -step. Number one is classic. You have to identify the audience of who you're serving. When I say audience, I mean being really specific. Is it male? Is it female? Is it 21 or is it 45? My priorities as a 21-year-old are completely different than mine as a 31-year-old with a three-year-old daughter. Everything shifts. The way I think what's important to me shifts. So step yeah. one is identifying to the age, the gender, the location, the TV shows that they watch, which are all buttons you can press on Facebook to advertise to those people, is getting that clear. And then that's step one. Step two, once you have ultimate clarity on that, I want you to take out a blank piece of paper and I want you to draw a giant capitalized T, like the letter, like T, like this, right? Okay. T, down yeah. the paper. On the left-hand side, I want you to write problem. On the mm -hmm. right-hand side, I want you to write solution. And then mm -hmm. I want you to write down the top 10 problems that that person is facing in their life. Mm -hmm. What are the top 10 problems that that person is facing? And then how your product or service helps them solve that. Mm -hmm. And I'm giving you 10, but you can do it 100. But then what you do is you take those problems, and that's what you talk about in your videos. And you mm. make it like two minutes. And so, for example, if you're a real estate agent and you're mm. going after first-time home buyers, what are mm. the problems that they're facing? They're wondering mm. how much down payment. They're wondering what's their interest rate going to be. They're wondering how much can I afford. So if I'm, if I'm out there and I'm doing a video and I'm a real estate agent, I'm going to drive to the location that they probably want to live in, take out my cell phone and say, hey, what's up, it's Billy Jean. And if you are looking to buy a home in this area here, 90210, then you're probably wondering three things right now. Number one, how much down payment do you need? You know, yeah. what's your credit have to be? What's your monthly payment going to be? And listen, I'm going to answer all of those for you in a short video that I created on the other page. But just to give you a reason to even go to that page, here's what you need to know. Boom, I'm going to impress them. Say, for more information, click this button, go here, and then I'm going to tell them to freaking text me or call me, and I would love to show them a house or whatever the hell it is. It's that simple. Problem yes. solution. And then to make it entertaining... What you guys want to do is go to a website called audiojungle.net or artlist, A R T L I S T dot I O, artlist.io. Yes. Both of those you can, you can buy music for yes. three bucks, five bucks, seven bucks for music you can legally use and you can yes. search for music by emotion. So you can yes. type in funny, you can type in sad, get that music, boom. 
Next thing I want you to do is go to uh, Amazon.com, Shindigs.com, something, and buy props. Props are like very oversized items or something really small, something that's going to stand out and be a pattern interrupt. So, for yeah. example, if going sticking with the real estate thing, um, like one of those for sale signs, that could be yes. a prop that you could put in your video. You know yes. what I mean? Like whatever it may be. So you got props, you have music, and then the other thing is shoot it on your cell phone. Those videos usually perform better, by the way. Um, mm. And then in addition to that, there's another website called storyblocks.com. S-T-O-R-Y blocks, B-L-O-C-K-S. And then, yep, and you can actually get uh, B-roll, like video footage of anything. So for mm. example, you can type in fire, and it will mm. give you HD clips that you can download and legally use in your videos that show something burning, school, mm. person dancing, whatever it is, and it's like 100 bucks for the year or something crazy. Mm. Just using those three things, your videos will be interesting. And then, if you really, really want to spice it up, if you're shooting a video in your local city, I want yeah. you to go to Google and type in this, top 10 most interesting places, and then shoot your video at one of those fucking locations. And mm. all of a sudden, even the most boring person is entertaining as shit. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love it. Uh, th these are a lot of things that I do that I, I think people don't know that I do, but I'm so, so glad you mentioned because, you know, I, I do, I have props in my video all the time. Exactly. Even, even right now, you're a gold microphone. My, my, my whole freaking set is, a, it's a, it, this is the, the bubble head, right? And you yep. see when I in, I'm in different <laughs> interesting location that I would have a background, even though the background may not necessarily be related to what I'm talking about. Right. But, it, it doesn't matter. It's, it's interesting. It's unusual. Then it's like, okay, that's, that's pretty cool. And right there, all we want is that couple, one or two minutes, grab the attention. That's it. Curiosity, they click on it, and then they want to find out more. So what Billy is talking about, I want to make sure you get this, is he's not saying, let's say you're a real estate agent. You're not running an ad on Facebook and say, hey, call me if you want to sell your property. No, no, no. That's not what we're done. Mm -hmm. Hell no. That, 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 that ad would not work. No. We are saying... Enter the conversation that's going in the, in the head. Problems they're already thinking and solve, wanting to be solved. Talk about those problems, those talking points. And if they want a little bit more, go, they click and go to your website. They opt in and now they want to find out more information, right? Yeah. And from there, through the education-based marketing, now they say, okay, you know what? This person has given me a lot of value before asking for anything. That yep. differentiates you from everybody else. Then they want to maybe meet you know, face to face with you and they want to set up an appointment or, or have a listing presentation and things like that. That's what we're talking about, right? 100%. And I mean, I think that you probably get the question all the time too, but people always ask like, you know, how can I get more customers right now? Will this work for my industry? Well, yeah. you're not unique. Neither am I, neither is Dan. It yeah. works because it's, people have problems. And when you can solve a problem for someone or you can teach them something they didn't know before, Yep. Think about how much trust, admiration, and how much you want to work with that person, right? Yeah. That's the whole yeah. game. Yeah, yeah. And just like you said, if someone's thinking about, well, how much down payment do I actually need or how much of a house I could afford, right? And every, every other agent is saying, hey, just let me, let me, let me find your property. Let me list your mm -hmm. property. You are saying, hey, let me help you out. If you're making X, probably, or with your, as a couple, as a, a husband and wife, this is probably the kind of house you can afford. Oh, mm -hmm. wow. And, and it's a very non-threatening way because we consume the content at our own time and own comfort versus yep. I'm not talking to anybody. I'm not talking to, to you. I'm not talking to anybody unless I'm ready, right? Beautiful. 100%. I love it. 100%. And, love and it. also, too, like the other thing is the targeting capabilities are so incredible on these platforms. And a lot of people, I've dealt with it a bunch, they say, well, is my customer really on Facebook is my customer really on Instagram? Is my customer? <laughs> I, I get that too. I get you know, that are they, too. Are, are they a human being? I fucking like, what, what the fuck else would they be? Like, 100%. <laughs> and so, like, everybody, the features on YouTube, being able to advertise the people based on uh, the videos that they watch. So, mm. for example, I'll give you one. So, Dan and I, we both will advertise towards entrepreneurs. Well, yes. I can ask you guys a question right here. What television show do most entrepreneurs watch? What's the name yes. of it? Yes. Shark Tank, right? Yeah. Every entrepreneur on Shark Tank. So you can actually go on YouTube and type in the word Shark Tank, and when people are watching episodes of Shark Tank or reruns, your advertisement can pop up and say something like this. Hey, are you an entrepreneur that likes Shark Tank? Well, I have a product idea for you. Or, hey, if you have a product you want to bring to life, like, boom. If you have a, 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 a new uh, spatula 
that's great for grilling. You can yes. advertise specifically on videos that are about barbecuing. You yes. can kind of, like, if there's a video out there, people allow it, and they have a million views about barbecuing, you can literally advertise there and say, hey, you like grilling? Try this new spatula because it will solve this, this, and this problem. If you want it, click here. Like, mm. that's the fucking power. And very few people are taking advantage of this. In addition to that, YouTube only charges you if somebody watches 30 seconds of your shit. That's if right. If you don't watch 30 seconds, you ain't even paying for it. And when they That's do right. watch, it's between one penny and 10 cents. If y'all don't knock it off and take action right now, come on, baby. We come got on. a problem. We got a problem. If they click... Yeah. And that's why sometimes when we make ads, we tell them, hey, if this is not what you're interested in, click skip ad. <laughs> right? Right. It doesn't cost. It doesn't cost. That's a good strategy right there, right? You yep, tell them, sure. hey, we solve this kind of problem. If you're looking for this, great. If you're not, click skip ad. We are getting in, in exposure, but it is not costing us exactly. money, right? I do want to ask you about this in terms of YouTube versus Facebook uh, from a, an entrepreneur point of view. If I'm creating a video ad on YouTube versus yeah. Facebook, what, what are some of the things I need to watch out for? That's a great question. Um, on Facebook, you really get a, a crutch, so to speak, in regards to the fact that whatever your video is, you have writing that accompanies it. Mm. And so on Facebook, I found I'm able to like, have videos that may take a little bit longer to develop or to be punchy, so to speak, because I get to build this, you know, perfect narrative and story to get people hooked and really want to watch the video. All the desires are actually created and the text. But mm. on YouTube, you don't have that luxury. You mm. literally need to grab someone's attention. There isn't any text. And so if that opening line doesn't grab their attention, that opening scene doesn't grab their attention, you're likely going to lose. And so... Mm. You know, sometimes we try and just take our content and just put it everywhere and hope yeah. it just translates well. But a lot of time, that's a recipe for disaster. Yeah, it doesn't work. Take the time and make content specific for that thing. Because mm -hmm. what you realize is, you know, for us, like when you really have a campaign that's going well, it's because you have a version for it on Facebook, a version for it that's on IG, and a version for it that's on YouTube. And mm -hmm. the reason why we as a company, for us and our clients and students, we like to diversify because sometimes it's magic and sometimes it's tragic. In other words, I have created, I cannot count how many ads and how much money I've lost on shit that doesn't work that I genuinely believed it was going to kill it. Mm. No idea. We just recently, Dan, for my birthday, May 1st, we, we ran a, uh, uh, a campaign that mm. I, I, I on, on everything, I thought it was going to generate in total 20,000 bucks. Mm. I told my team, I said, whatever, let's just put it out. It it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a surefire winner, right? Yeah, I was like, I was like, no, I thought it was going to lose, and just like there, it yeah. ended up doing eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars in six days. Wow! And wow. here's the other thing: when you when it comes to marketing, you have to put your ego aside because the funny thing about that story is I actually didn't want to test it at all. My mm. team, my team, our marketing team internally, they're the ones who are like, well, we never test anything low ticket put it out to the marketplace. And I was yeah. like, fuck that. And I almost allowed my arrogance in knowing everything to cost yeah. us $800,000. So mm -hmm. understand that, you know, men lie, women lie, numbers don't. Always let the numbers dictate. Your opinion does not matter. And it mm -hmm. doesn't matter how much expertise you have, even if you do this every single day. Right. Yes. Yes. And, and sometimes as I say, as an entrepreneur, I always say, don't underestimate how wrong we can be. <laughs> Dude, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, give us a little bit more background. So you, you always do high ticket, which is the same thing with me. I always do high ticket. Um, talk yeah. to us a little bit about this product, like in, in terms of the campaign, because I want to use this as an example, a case study, right? Yeah. Uh, like what's the, the birthday one? Yeah. The birthday, what, what's the difference in terms of an offer? Uh, who do we yeah. sell to? And then uh, what, what, what have you changed in terms of campaign? Yeah, that's a great. So um, usually when we're running advertising campaigns and uh, if we're bringing anything to like the phone where the whole objective is to run an ad to like an application or something like that, phone, yeah. Yeah. The, the minimum of what you need to be charging to really make it you know, profitable most of the time is a minimum of 3K. Yeah. I like 5K. 5K has been a strong point for us or... Uh, like $7,500 for an annual package, um, mm -hmm. you know, or if it's like something like $30,000 or more, I'll personally get on the phone for like the day and have those. But even mm -hmm. that, that's a two-step close. 
I yeah. think the biggest difference is, though, is what I learned in this most recent test that was pretty humbling. Mm. And it was kind of like a reminder was that when I'm running ads to then close on the phone, which is I got my on the other side of this wall, I have my sales team. That's yeah. great. It can be very profitable and is. But there's nothing like an offer that the internet is spitting out that's reaching the masses. So when we did this $31 offer, we ended up getting over 12,000 new customers. And the perfect part about that is, guess how to sell and to, to make that transaction and to deliver, it took zero human capital. And the, the challenge is with humans, humans are the biggest variable on the planet. They can yeah. have someone pass away. They can have yeah. a bad day. They can have a happy day. And then all of a sudden, it's not even their fault. You know, and, and, and here we are, and you lose everything. But on the internet, your pitch is perfect every time. Like, you can take this video, and it goes out there every time. It's always going to be the same. And mm. the scale and the speed of which it can scale, there's mm. nothing like it. So I told our team internally, like, when we saw so much cash come in in a short period of time, it mm. made me change the way that I do business. I said... I get so caught up because I'm a salesman. I sold cars. I sold on the phone. I've done everything. Because I'm so caught up in the way I'm used to doing business, I almost mm. forgot about the most powerful thing on the planet, which is making an offer and driving people to a purchase page. Now, mm. again, it's difficult to do. I think this camera just went off there. Sauce. Uh, it's, it's very difficult to do, but we're back. Um, but nonetheless, uh, it's the most profitable thing. So, mm. so, so instead of, uh, so before you have the 3K, 5K, you know, 30K offer, and this is a new test, it's, it's $31. Is it a membership or just a one time? So, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll break down the funnel for, for everybody here so you can take notes because it works really good. So it was uh, $31, and this is actually, I'll go in a couple ways about this. So okay. it was 31 bucks, and they got access to all of my courses. So it was okay. my 31st birthday. I said, it's our legacy bundle. And I said, you can have access to all the courses I've done. Now, in fairness, a big reason of why it worked and why it was successful is because yeah. I've been spending the last five years advertising, letting people know that when I launch a course, it's like 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 5,000. So yes. when they see it on sale for 31 bucks, it's, yeah. like a, it's a no-brainer. Yes. So, but also in addition to that, the upsells. So yes. it was a $31, and then the bump was another, I think, $29.95 for my memory. And mm. we had 50% of the people take that. And then right behind there, we had a one-time offer for mm. $1,000 to become a lifetime member to one of my programs. And okay. that also did decently well. We got about 3 or 4% of the people to take that. And got it. If they said no, we had a down sell that gave them the option to split that payment into two. And okay. then after that, they could pay a $50 application fee to speak to someone on our phone. So there was another side of it, those appointments that, mm -hmm. you know, uh, a percentage of them wanted to talk to someone on the phone, and that's for our higher ticket stuff. And I'm not got even it. including that revenue in that figure. That's not included. Mm -hmm. So you include, the, you include the, uh, the 31, 29.95, and then yep. the, the 1,000. Yep. Got it. And then they break it up into two payments. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. 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 And so from this, this is actually a very powerful lesson because for someone who maybe is not a super savvy marketer, yeah. there are a lot of people, they just sell a product. Hey, here's my $50 product. What Billy's done and what a lot of savvy marketers have done is usually the initial sale. We know that the best time to make a second sale, it's right after they've just bought something. From yes. Not, not three months from now, the minute they bought something, right? Yep. Uh, and the reason, Billy, why are you asking for just another twenty nine ninety five and and not like huge amount of money? Just they just spent thirty one bucks and boom, here's another spend another twenty nine ninety five. You get this, right? And yep. then you you jump to one thousand. Talk to us a little bit about that psychology. Sure. Well, the the first one, like that first offer, the bump. It mm. it's one of those offers that's like, ah, shit, might as well. Like yeah. you, you don't want no people to think it. Meaning, it, don't make it a product or service that people have to like really work to understand the value, right? Mm. It's mm. where they can see right away. And I believe what it was, was our million dollar playbook. And it was okay. basically a bunch of templates and emails and, and uh, scripts of how we had like our first million dollar month, right? Got so it, it was like it. a bundle. It was an easy no brainer. And it was like, okay, cool. I'll take it. And then the second one where there was a higher price point, it was also attached with an eight minute video. 
Now, okay. about that, not, not everybody's going to watch an eight minute video or five minutes, however long it was. And mm -hmm. so you're going to lose a ton of people just because people don't want to take the time to do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then also too, realizing that a lot of people don't feel comfortable enough or maybe they can't afford to just spend a thousand dollars at the time. And right. so that right there is kind of, let's cast out a net to see kind of who takes it. And you'll mm -hmm. always get a percent, percentage that does. And in this case we yes. did. Yes, you know, the three, the three four percent, the the ones who are who are the more impulsive buyers, and also mm -hmm. who are willing to spend money, right? Yeah, and then also too, like you know, some of the people just been following us for a long time, and they were just excited to have like another good deal. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So like, some people just been on the fences, and so it was really interesting because a lot of those people who bought the thirty one dollar thing, they've yeah. been following us for a long time and never pulled the trigger on anything. So I think it's healthy for anybody. Like, like Dan, like right now, if you put out something for like super cheap, I would be fascinated to see what it takes, especially everybody knows you as the high ticket guy. So mm -hmm. when you do, how many people are on the sidelines kind of like, how can I get in? How can I get in? If you get, I'm really curious because it's just opened up my brain to like, holy cow, how much money have I been leaving on the table? You mm -hmm. know, and I was, I was talking to some of my buddies at Digital Marketer and I yeah. was like, hey, this, we had this experiment and went crazy. Yeah. And they made the joke of, how do you think we built our company off of a $7 offer? And it just, it just made so much sense of like, oh my gosh. And so I think everybody where in terms of, there's some, there's some, some of my students, they, they want the higher um, education, more advanced kind of program, more intense. But right. there's some where, hey, you know what, I'm happy with just a bug. I'm happy with something small, right? It's like, it's like when we're hungry, we don't always want, give me a, like a full course meal. Exactly. You know what? I just, I just want some, I just want a burger, right? I just want some salad. That's it. Yep. I want a quick burrito. I don't, I don't want a full on like meal like that. It's, yeah, and much as I forgot that, you know what I yeah. mean? Like I, I was like, Hey, we serve it this way and this is how it is. And well, mm -hmm. you see that could have cost us freaking, you know, our first million dollar week. And so yes. I, you know, that was a, that was a mistake that I, I made. I was guilty of that. Now, what about in terms of like entrepreneurs who are not in the digital marketing space, right? They own more traditional business. Example, yeah. like you talk about like a realtor and things like that. Because your video, because um, people might look at your video, they look at my video, they would say the production value is very, very high, right? We have right. a nice camera, we have nice, you know, lighting, and then yours is yeah. even crazier. Like, uh, yeah. I love the one that you just recently did, the, the Greatest Ad Man, which is kind of like a yeah, show for, for Greatest Showman, right? I love that. Yeah. Uh, and like you've got, you've got the, the dance routine, you've got, this, <laughs> but that's like very, fa like for something like that, first of all, question, how long does it usually take to yeah. put together something like that? Like what's that process like? Yeah. And, and what, let's, let's answer that first and I'll ask, ask you a second question. So for us, um, we, we have an in-house media team of six. So, yes. you know, to my right on this side of the office, that's a big component of this is that I got people in house all day. And this is all we do is, is make videos. Also too, like I, I'm very involved in the process. So I write like almost all of our videos and like super hands in with the directing of it. And so when, when we go into an ad, like we bang shit out, like that greatest showman and damn, like tell you what you think. That was like two days, three days. Well, that's not bad at all. Yeah. Wow. That's fast. Like, we, we go, we're like, I'm obsessed with speed, especially in yeah. testing because like, we can run that ad and then it not work that well, you know? Mm -hmm. And so yeah. I think people get disconnected from, you know, when you miss, missing is not the bad part. It's the fact that you put up an ad, it took mm -hmm. you two weeks to do, and then when you missed, you took another month to try again. Mm -hmm. Now think about us, we'll create an ad, put it out in one day, and if it doesn't work, the next day we're trying something new. That's the game. If there's a tip I can give everybody here, mm. online entrepreneurs, um, you know, internal, like local businesses, uh, corporations, everybody needs to invest into at least one videographer in your business. At least one. That's mm. their full time to do. And I'll give it to you like saying why. Just simple comparison. Going with the food example that you were given, Dan, if you mm. and I said, you know what, let's go get something to eat after this. And we were in a yes. brand new city. We would yes. go to Google and we would say, where should we eat? And then yes. if people just had pictures, but there was one with a fucking video that showed the experience, the environment, the people, the happy customers, customers. Mm. they're going to win. It's just yes. that simple. And so everyone has to move to this. And especially when you're in a service-based business where people are buying you yeah. and in, in the barrier to entry is so low where anybody yeah. can have a picture and say, I'm a real estate professional. Look at me. Yeah, yeah. 
and there's no way to actually fill the personality, the video wins. Because online, everybody forgets one really important thing. You have to sell yourself. Look at yes. the ads online. I challenge everybody to pull up your phone, go to Facebook, and when you're scrolling, see how many advertisements solely focus on the product or service. But if yeah. we were to go back 50 years ago, 30 years ago, 20 years ago, and say, why do people buy? First answer that everybody's going to say is because they know, like, and trust you. Yeah. Right? Trust you. But how yes. come online we forgot that? And we yeah. stopped selling ourselves. That's what yes. the fuck video is. Yeah, and, and with you and I, we both very much believe in the personal branding. Like, just like you have, I am marketing, right? Like, yeah. it, and your brand, your office, I know the blue color, like everything is branded, right? So yeah. where it's, it's heavily branded, not just the company, but also you, you are as the, the personality, the, the, the entrepreneur, right? That's striving the business. And I think a lot of people, personally, I like, because some people, they might think, well, I'm not good on camera. I'm not charismatic. I'm not as articulate. I don't like the way I sound. Um, right. I think both Billy and I, we agree. First of all, this is a learnable skill, yep. right? Because we weren't always very articulate on camera, For but sure. none of us, right? And second thing is, I like the bear of entry. I like the fact that most people are not comfortable. Exactly. Just like public speaking, right? But yep. the minute you can do it, it gives you a lot of power, just like what Billy's talking about. Like, yeah. you think about your competitors in your city. How many of them have videos? None. Like, very few. You can probably count them. You can count yeah. them. And what you got to realize is that with personalities, like, not everybody will like you. And so, you know, it, it, to me, it's like, as much as, as many people, like, our ads have been seen now over 500 million times. Yes. And I can tell you there's a lot of people who love us. But I can yeah. also tell you there's a lot of people who are like, fuck that guy. Some of you are still watching this and like, yeah. I can't fucking stand this guy. Some of you started to watch this and is like, now I have a different opinion of this guy. So yeah. what I'm telling you is that the people who don't like me, they still have the problem. So if mm. you're a marketer and you can help them solve that problem, someone's dying to give someone cash. That's not me. That's not yeah. Dan. That's not yeah. John. That's not yeah. Sally. So don't think your, uh, your personality is your weakness. It's your opportunity, mm -hmm. right? It's yes. your opportunity. And then and in that, addition to that, you said something huge, Dan. You said it's a practice skill. A lot yes. of people don't think of it as a practice skill. So I recommend everybody try and find a local improv class. And uh, improv yes. class is, a, is basically, it's an acting class where, you know, there's like a room of like 10 people. And then they'll say, all right, you and you. You're the husband, you're the wife, and I want you guys to pretend you just saw each other for the first time after three years of being divorced. Mm. Go. And they just have you act. And you mm. just play a role. And then they go, okay, time's up. Mm. And they give you a different scenario. Amazing mm. what you'll discover about yourself in this mm. $15 a class you know, environment. Right. And, and second thing I think you mentioned, the second question I have, it's in terms of quantity, right? Because if we spend too much time trying to craft that perfect video takes a month to script it out yeah. and it takes another month for a storyboard and finally you film it and then another month to edit yeah. that is not sufficient enough because you need it's enough like business right like you need we need enough like quantity billy how many how many video ads you put out on a on a monthly basis like you, you just keep putting stuff out there oh shit man i mean i have thousands of videos period just for for starters but in regards to ads, you know, we, we really live and die by, you know, quote, let the numbers dictate. And mm. so, for example, you know, let's say like tomorrow I'll shoot a new ad, right? Mm. And it's because we're about to launch a new promotion. But if that ad goes well, I honestly probably want to do shit for a while. I always try and be in front of it, but I'll probably chill. If mm. that ad doesn't go well, then guess what? I, I, we might just sit here and I go, ad go, then I have to do another one. Then I have to do another one. Mm -hmm. So we have this process where it's like, it works or it doesn't. And the beautiful thing about advertising anything online mm -hmm. and almost instantaneously for most mm -hmm. campaigns, almost all campaigns, yeah. you know, if it works or not right off the bat, it's not like yes. radio and television and billboards, like where you had to wait three months and they put you in these contracts. And by the way, I've, I've had billboards. I paid 36 grand for three and a half weeks for fucking four billboards in San Diego. Wow. Yeah, it was stupid. Like, I, I could talk about that experiment. Now, talk, 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 about, talk about that, actually. Yeah, yeah. So, so four, how much you spend in total? 36000 bucks for, for three and a half weeks for okay. four billboards in San Diego. Oh, wow. Yeah. And let me explain why, okay? Yes. So we, we're having an event in San Diego. Now, here's the crazy thing about billboards. 
Yes. Is there was there's two sides to this story. Number right. one is I wanted to see if we can get an ROI. So our whole thing was billboard to automated webinar to ticket. And I was like, can we ROI this thing? Can we actually make sense of this? Yes. And we made a little bit of money from that, but overall it, it wasn't like a profitable thing. And to keep in mind, we had like the, probably the tightest billboards in San Diego. My okay. Dear. Okay. So, so we run this thing. An attractive billboard. You spend the money still like very little return. It's not worth yeah. it. And it, it did better than I thought. Like we made like, you know, if like, if one of the billboards was like 9,500, we might've made like three grand, four grand. This still not bad. I think most yeah, people. Yeah, exactly. it, wasn't, it wasn't a horrible wash and we had the billboards, but here's where it got profitable. The, the billboards got profitable when I took a picture and I made videos of our billboards being around the city and then put it in an online ad. <laughs> ah, okay. it, it, here's why, because think about the association that you have on a billboard. Who are the mm. companies that still get billboards? Mm, big companies or... Fortune so 100, so Pepsi, yep. you yep. know, yep. the major companies. Yep. So if I'm sitting in the company of like, you know, uh, uh, Pepsi and X and Y and Z, all these recognizable brands, and then it's like Billie Jean is marketing. It's like, whoa, shit, this guy is a big deal. So when, you know, we have multiple video ads, we're in the video ads. I got one video ad where I'm flying in a helicopter around San Diego and I'm mm. looking down at my billboards. See, mm. with everybody watching this, I want you to start thinking about your content the way Dan and I do, which is this. We see content as assets the same way most people see real estate as an investment. Oh, right there. Because yeah, a, lot, a lot of people are like, hey, I'm going to, um, you know, save this $20,000, $50,000, $100,000 to put a down payment on a house. And then in 20 years, I'm going to flip it, give it to my kids, whatever. I go, I'm going to fucking turn on my cell phone uh, and make an offer. And then I'm going to put this shit on YouTube. And over the course of a year, it might make me 300 bucks, 500 bucks, 1,000 bucks, million bucks, whatever it is. But the thing is, is think about it costs you nothing to do. You yes. just pick up your phone. And it can yes. generate, it can, it can be potentially a thousand times more profitable than like a real estate investment. That's how much it constant. So when I'm taking a helicopter to film these billboards, it's because I'm making that three and a half weeks that I had billboards an eternity. Mm. How long has Billie Jean has billboards? Forever. As long as that video is out there, I'm pushing it. I got that fucking billboard forever. And so I've done a couple since then. And it's honestly just for like branding and positioning. But yes. it starts to getting a direct ROI off of it. Not so much. I got, yes. I got one more set of billboards I'll roll out uh, this year. I'll, I'll let you in on it when it comes. Actually, I'll just fucking tell you guys now. So I'm going in front of a bunch of universities, and I'm basically yes. saying, talking shit. Like, hey, our genius is better than theirs. You know, our call, they won't teach you shit. They'll give you loans, but we will. And they're all positioned, like, right in front of colleges. So we're doing got some it. big shit there. So I'm, I'm excited got for that. Got it. So I, I love, because this is so critical. When we're thinking about content, we're not thinking about linear, that, okay, here's a piece of content. No, 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 no. It's, that's one piece of content, but how can we, how can we repurpose it? How can we leverage? Yeah. How can we maximize? So yeah, the, billboard, the billboard lasts three and a half weeks, but when you have the picture, post that on Instagram, you have the story, right? You can put it in the highlight and yeah. you can turn it into an ad. Like, like it's a helicopter, you film it, that B-roll you can use in how many videos, right? Exactly. Forever, right? So then it's like the, the three and a half weeks, the, the money you invest, not so much to get leads directly from, from right. Billboard, but what we can do with that piece of content, right? And that's you, how- You know what it is, and you're exactly right, because here's what, here's what the billboards are, you guys. Yep. They're props. The props, props, yeah. you, you put it in the videos, you, they're fucking big they're, ass props. Yeah. Big, big props. Expensive props. <laughs> big expensive props. <laughs> expensive props. <laughs> and even, even watch this, Dan, like even us being able to talk about this experiment in the yeah. podcast has right given there. value, right? Yeah, like it's, it. it's, it's just, there's so, so you just, just remember like um, uh, one of my, I think my number one favorite entrepreneurial quote is there's never a lack of resources just the lack of resourcefulness, right? And yes. You guys have probably heard of it before, but I do the same thing That's with creativity great. because most of the time when I, I coach an entrepreneur, I work with an entrepreneur, the mm -hmm. thing that's stopping them is creativity. So mm -hmm. someone says like, well, I just don't have the capital to do it. No, you're just not creative enough to come up with the money or you don't yeah. have enough sales skills to fucking sell somebody who's got the money to give it to you. All right. the problems that you have in business can be solved with extreme creativity. So when you're yes. thinking inside of the box and you're thinking inside of this rules and guidelines, you're going to fucking lose. 
period. Yes. That's why you yes. see the people that didn't do that good in high school or college and they got like the 2.0s, the 3.0s, the the is because they are creative. They know how to get out of a spot. They know that when they have they, don't, they think they inside a box, they think outside a box, right? They try new exactly. ideas. Exactly, yes. dude. Now, I'm also I'm also curious. So with you, like you are teaching entrepreneurs. I know you teach a lot of digital marketers, teaching them how to do ads, yeah. right? I know I, you have you have the program. Uh, what about in terms of like private clients? How do you work with private clients? They say someone comes to you, or do you even work with private clients? Yeah, hey, that's a great question. So okay. when I when I first started and I uh, was selling that uh, quit smoking program, yes, that was my whole thing for like two years is selling similar programs to that, yes. and that's how I learned the skill. I ended up separating with that company, moving back in with my parents, and I was at square one. So mm -hmm. then I started running Facebook ads to myself and saying, hey, I've been doing Facebook ads two years for this company, but I'm mm -hmm. looking to experiment with some new companies. And okay. while I started running these ads, long story short is, I got all kinds of inquiries. Some people were like, hey, Billy, I have this physical product. Do you want me to sell it? And I'm like, sure, I'll do that. Some mm -hmm. people were like, hey, man, do you have a course? I'm like, yeah, sure, I got a fucking course. I'm trying to get out of my mom's house. I'll make a course. Yeah, two weeks. And other people were like, hey, can you do consulting? I'm like, hold on one second. What the fuck is consulting? Sure, I can do that. So I actually came into the game and started doing like every aspect at once. Hella overwhelmed, working to like fucking literally nonstop. And then someone goes, hey, man, so you have an agency, right? And I'm like, what's that? And then someone else goes, you have an agency, right? And I'm like, what's that? So fuck, I had a fucking agency. And then I turned that skill into an agency and actually learned how to do that. And I started working with local franchises. And I did that for like five years consistently. And I stopped doing the coaching shit because it was annoying. And mm. then I ended up, again, fast forwarding, saying, okay, I had a, I had a decision to make. Because then we were doing uh, the agency and then we started doing a little bit more coaching. But mm. internally, it was shattering my team and, and overworking the hell out of them. Can we switch cameras real fast? Over, overworking the hell out of them, and they were super stressed out. And mm. so what we, I had to do as a CEO is I said, we have to make a decision. Are we going to focus on fucking agency, or are we going to focus on fucking education? Because mm. both isn't working. They require different processes, different skills, and it's not scalable to fucking And, and, and it pulls you into two, two different yeah, directions. It was, it was a fucking nightmare, but I mean, I'm, I'm thankful for it. And then I said, you know what? We actually have the fucking resume, the background, the skill set to go all in this teaching thing. College isn't teaching entrepreneurs what they actually need to know. It's a fucking scam. I said, let's battle it. So I, I crafted an email and I sent out one email and I fired like 100 to 150 clients with one email. And I gave them my 30-day notice. And that fucking shook them up because they're, not, they're used to saying, fuck you, agency. And I was like, hey, we're just letting you know we're going a different direction. So you got to find another market. I, I have to ask this question. How many, of you, how many of them come back and say, hey, Billy, don't, 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 don't let us go. We will pay you we more. Had, we had a good amount, right? Like you had some people who were like, okay, we'll figure it out. But a lot of people were like, hey, man, but like, can you still do us? Like, da, 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 da. And I'm still cool with you know, a lot of these people too today. Yes. Um, but I had to make that hard decision. And it was hard because, remember, that was recurring revenue that was coming in. Yeah, it's retainer. It's a good, very good retainer. Oh, right? my yes. God. Yeah, dude. I, was, so I, I wasn't excited about it. Matter of fact, I was, I was scared shitless. But we were building our membership site uh, at the time. And I was like, well, look, if these clients are paying us this, we can do a membership site and get it up just as much. So I just had a belief, and we went after and do it. But truth be told, once we did that, dude, we sucked at the membership site. When we mm. launched the membership site, we had um, 130 members paying 100 bucks. To give you an idea, we lost, you know, fucking six figures in recurring revenue. Yeah. So that did not cover the margin. It yeah. took a year and a half to crack the membership shit model. And then I figured it out. And now, you know, uh, to date, we have over 7,500 people in 75 different countries. And we've nice. sold over 30,000. And so, like, it's, it's been an interesting model. Um, but nonetheless, like, you know, we fucked up on a lot of stuff. We did some good things, and mm. here we are. Well, talk to us a little bit about the, the membership side, too. Like, what did you do in terms of from... Because I think a lot of people, they yeah. think about recurring revenue. They want to scale. Maybe they're thinking of a launching a membership. Sure. I've got a membership site as well. Yeah. So what, what, what did you change? What are the key, one of the key strategies? From yeah, the, like, yo, it's... It's yeah. harder. It's like 10 times harder than anyone thinks. And I'm sure you can relate to that too, because there's the acquisition side, but then there's the retention side and, yeah. and focusing on both was really hard, especially with a limited you know, team and resources. So mm. um, I think the hardest part in the beginning was just acquisition. How mm. do you get members to do it? You know, and we, mm. we, when it opened and we had like the launch, that was our biggest time. And since then we didn't have any real luck. And then the formula that we use mm. to get members now is 
of course, the most overwhelmingly simple thing ever, but you had, we had to be good at it, but it's just this. Advertisement, opt in to watch a video, and then a fucking video that sells them. A classic video sales letter. Okay, we, BSL, okay. And okay. that's the fucking thing. And we say, hey, you know, come in for 109 bucks a month, and then we have a, a, an option for them to uh, upgrade to an annual membership. And that's mm. how we really balance out, you know, this. But when our funnel was kicking ass, we were breaking even the same day. So we'd get a member and make all of that money back the same fucking day and wow. just keep, keep fucking bringing people in. And that's wow. when we started to spend a shit. Like, so in January, we spent a half a million dollars in ads just on our personal brand. Not like, like just personal brand, Billy Genius Marketing. So mm. that was a trip. Um, and uh, so that's really how we built up the membership site. And then the, the biggest mistake that people make with membership sites that I personally made was, and we just switched this, is our membership site, retention was not where we wanted to be. We had people stick around for like four or five months. But the reason why they were leaving was because a lot of them felt overwhelmed. Because my model was I taught a different skill every month. And to me, that was awesome because it was like the best value ever. Yeah, because you want to give them something every month, like some, some value. You, want to, you have so much you want to share. Yeah. So some people saw it like that, but other people would come in and they go, where the fuck do we start? And uh, I talked to my buddy of mine and we had a conversation and um, yes. he said, the, the people that I've seen do the best in this membership site space or coaching space, he said this, he says, is when they have one singular outcome. And it, was, it just hit me. And I said, oh shit our gene pool, that's why people are dropping because they know they needed to learn something. They didn't know where to start. So we just did a complete fucking rebrand called the Genius Advantage. Now when people come in, we have one focus to mm -hmm. help you fucking make an ad on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube and make sure it's profitable. That's it. That's it. That's all we do. You fucking make, why would you buy this? Because you want to make an ad and you want to grow your business. That is the sole outcome. And mm -hmm. everything in the fucking program is designed for that. So it's, hey, click here to start building your ad. That's the whole thing. And the lessons bring you through that. Then it says, click here to fix your ads. And it has a search bar. You can fucking type in your industry and just mm -hmm. see examples of that industry being mm -hmm. broken down and what's working, what's not. And then mm -hmm. it's copy and customize. And we just give them downloadable templates that they can do. And bro, we, we're, we're, we're just launching this and we've been pre-selling this to our members. It has been night and fucking day. Everyone's and loving it. Every, I'm, Everything changed. Everything. I, I saw the page and, and immediately I saw the page. I forwarded that to my team. I said, look, look at this page. <laughs> it is a fun, and then I look at the offer and I love how, how clear it is. Because I think a lot of membership sites where they're saying, uh, you know, let, let, me, let me give you this and this and this. And let, let me throw in the with dish, dishwasher and the kitchen sink. And, <laughs> exactly. Let, let, let me give you, uh, this will improve your relationship. This will improve your finance. <laughs> this will make you fly. <laughs> yeah, you know, this will help you with the sex life. Like, you know, the whole nine yard, right? But yeah. yes, you narrow down, even if you think about video marketing, it's such a broad thing, right? Yeah. That is, a bit, just making videos is a whole entire membership site by itself. Right, exactly. Dude, that was just, I mean, it, it sounds so simple, right? And it's like, oh, okay. but I, it, it was every, I mean, even from... But, but what do you teach them on a monthly basis, though? With like, let's say they join, they, you give them this, like a jump start, a lot of content yeah. on, on how to create the ad, how to start. So like, every, every week, I'm actually live. Uh, do we have the GoPro set up right now or no? Okay, no worries. Um, so we have, a, we have a whole studio that we uh, invested into. I fucking spent a million bucks reviewing our office, but we have a full yeah. studio, 25 seats, a whole deal. But anyways, I broadcast live there every week, and mm. I critique ads live with them. And then uh, the guests I bring in on a monthly basis, we yeah. go in and we share about how to make your ads better. So everything. Because how I realized it is I, I was on a call one day live, and like, I had like 1,000 students live. I was like, yo, how many of you have ads that are currently running right now? Dude, majority didn't. And I was like, I, I said on the spot, I said, guys, I failed you. Mm. I failed you as a teacher. I said, that's all we fucking, that advertising is how we've done all of this. And I have most of you who haven't done your ad. I said, all this shit stops now. We fucking revamped the whole thing. Best mm. business decision I've ever made. Mm. And then from there, so now it's, your membership is $109, right? Yeah. And you have a 7,500, how many members? 7,500. 7, some, of, some of those opted into like, some of them have like a lifetime offer from a launch we did a while back. And got some it, of them it. pay on an annual basis, right? So got they're not all like that. Do you that. give them a little discount if they do uh, upgrade to annually? For sure. For sure. Absolutely. Yeah, okay. So they pay monthly is $109, right? 
Yeah, and, and that was with the old program. We're upping our oh. shit to 197 right now. Mm, nice. So that's and, and I like the 197 because you can see that filters out the people who are not serious. People exactly. paying 197, they they are much more like that's a few few thousand bucks a year. And that's the other thing I would tell everybody to be wary of on a membership site is like it feels like this safe blanket because you're like, oh, recurring revenue. But don't forget like to really look at how long people are sticking and like would it have been better to just sell them a thousand dollar product? Like it just manage your fucking money better. So it's a, it's a very interesting like psychological play that we play on ourselves with it because mm-hmm. it's like there is a part of me that looks at it and is like, well, if everything goes to shit tomorrow, at least I have this recurring revenue and there is a blanket there. But it's also like, well, could you have sold them something? You know, so it's, it's an ongoing testing. I like it as a part of our business, but I'll also never give up the phone sell side too. But Correct. Going the best is the three tier. This is when like this month. We have potential to do $2 million this month, which is a fucking record for us, like crazy. Awesome. But it's, it's, it's three things that are going well. It's the phones are killing it, and that's business as usual. Mm-hmm. It's the recurring revenue is coming in, and that's business as usual. But then it's marketing team making offers 100% online, no salespeople required, going. Mm-hmm. And it's all of those things hitting at the same time. When yes. all of those hit, then it's like, now we're, now we're doing our thing. And then we'll trickle in some of the high ticket workshops, consulting, some agency work strategically that we do, you know, cause we'll still do agency shit, but we just don't advertise it because most of the time it's for strategic reasons. You know, like if you, if you and I talked and we're like, Hey, you know, let's work out a deal. We'd probably work out something on the back end, not like give me X amount a month. You know what I mean? So it's just change of how we leverage it. I love it. I love it. And then I thinking about the membership, it makes a lot of sense because I'm just thinking as a, if, if I'm a customer, I invest in a membership. It's yeah. you're helping me to solve a very, Specific problem. So yeah. let's say, let's say, let's say I don't, I've never done any video ads. I joined, right? $199, $197 soon to be. Yeah. It's awesome. Uh, I set up the ad, but after I start the ad, I would need to tweak. I would want to make sure it's profitable, right? I would and, need then, to- and then watch. It, it, it literally, you, you, you just nailed it because for us as a company, we said, dude, look at our best students and the people who buy the higher ticket shit. They mm-hmm. like us and love us because they all are advertising. So the more people get their first ad going, they start winning and they're like, shit, I'm only paying 200 bucks a month and I'm fucking bringing in thousands a month from this mm. advertising. Hell yeah. And then they go, well, how can I put this thing on YouTube? Mm. How can I put this thing on Instagram? And mm. here's what I love about it is thinking long term is the thing that you and I both know is going to happen is there's going to be different ways to advertise. Yes. There's going to be new shit that none of us are thinking about. And when that happens, guess where they come? Oh, right here. So they never yes. want to stop. It's like, oh, well, Billy, what about LinkedIn? Boom, we build a module on that. And we have a focus. The pe- people know what it is because people know who Billy Gina's marketing is right now, at least some people. But it's like, okay, well, what do you do? And I fucking hate that because that means I did a bad job. You know, mm-hmm. so like that's, that's mm-hmm. the practice. Mm, I love it. I love it. Billy, if uh, my audience wants to find out more about what you do, your membership or your higher ticket program, like what's the best way to, to learn yeah. more? Um, guys, just go to billygeneismarketing.com and we'll retarget the hell out of you or just follow us on Instagram at billygeneismarketing. I, and, I uh, love that. I love it because that's right there. It's a very, you learn a lot. Just go into the site yeah. and then Billy will be talking the hell out of you. <laughs> we'll find you. You don't have to find us. <laughs> and, you, and you will see, I mean, to me, just seeing all the new ads and seeing how you do what you do, right? Yeah. It's, that to me is very important because it's not just you're teaching video marketing. You're demonstrating. Are, you're doing what you teach, right? Oh, yeah. And you are, it's like you're doing what you teach and you're demonstrating them. Hey, this is how I attract customers. That's how you found me. Yeah. Let me tell you how to do the same, right? That's well, I mean, when you, so you have videos. Of, I saw uh, like you'll actually have like your sales calls online. And yeah. I tell people all the time, I say, that's the game. He gets it. Like everybody can sit here and fucking run an ad and say you're a high ticket closer. Very few can say, watch this fucking video and watch what I do. Yeah. And that's what I try and do in all of our ads is like, if no one, like even if someone doesn't like us, they can't deny we're fucking great at advertising. Yeah, 100%. 100%. You know what I mean? And, that's, and, that's, and, 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 and usually they're just jealous. Like, oh shit, I wish I could do yeah. that, right? Fucking troll fucks. No. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the ones, the ones who, are like, who are smart, we, like, we look at each other, we admire each other's work, we study each other's work and 100%. say, hey, that's, that's very smart. The next time, maybe I should talk to my team and come with something and like that. And that's always say is like, you know, the people who I've found who are being the most successful are always the biggest students. You know what I mean? Like even when we were talking the first time my first thing was like dude how'd you get your youtube subscribers so much like, my yes. brain goes into like what can i learn and what yes. you know 
And that's, and that's what I want everybody to have is like, ask yourself that question. What can I learn? And you'll just have a better life overall. Love you, man. Love you, brother. Appreciate it. Uh, Thank you so much for having me. This has been awesome. And definitely, if, if later on, maybe, you know, a few months later, six months a year, I'd love to have you back and just to share with us. I'm sure you, you make all kinds of pivot and all kinds of new progress as well, yeah. right? And so dude, you got you to gotta, you gotta come on our show, man. We got to get you to San Diego. 100%. You got it. You got Appreciate it. Appreciate you, brother. Let's do this. Thank you. Thank you for having me, boss.